This evaluation platform is going to be used to show how we may use the MDO 4000 to help debug and troubleshoot the integration of a wireless LAN module into an embedded design. This evaluation platform puts the wireless LAN module into a test mode where it only transmits a burst about once per second. That's a tricky thing to capture on any spectrum analyzer so we'll set the analyzer up to be triggered so that it can capture those bursts very reliably. The first thing we'll do is bring up the trigger menu and tell that we want to trigger on an edge but using RF power so it'll trigger on the burst itself. Uh, rising slope is good, minus 15 dBm power level is good. I'm going to change the trigger mode from auto to normal and that will ensure that we're only going to uh, trigger during that one second burst and not in between. So the next thing we need to do is just tell the spectrum analyzer to be triggered instead of free running. And now we can see we're capturing a spectrum or each time that the burst is occurring. So we can start off by looking at the time domain uh, nature of the burst. So I bring up RF versus time traces. I can add the RF amplitude versus time and that essentially plots out the power over this 50 megahertz span versus time. And I can actually see the RF burst it looks like a big blob because there's modulation that causes the power to vary up and down. And what we're, we can see is we're looking at the spectrum right at the very beginning of that RF burst. Now doing a single shot capture, we can go examine one burst a bit more closely. Right now the spectrum measurement is being made right at the leading edge of this burst, but if I simply take the pan control, we can look and see how the spectrum is changing during that burst. And this will help you to look for you know, spectral anomalies and distortion that might occur due to other things going on in the system. I've attached a couple of probes to this evaluation platform. Uh, one probe is looking at a high-speed UART signal that's communicating to the wireless LAN module. And another probe is looking at uh, the power supply voltage. And so turning on channel 1, we can see the high-speed UART uh, signal here. If we add channel 2, we can look at the power supply pin. Now that channel 2 power supply pin I have AC coupled at 10 millivolts of division and we can actually see about a 20 millivolt drop in the power supply voltage that exactly coincides with the RF burst. So if you're having some issues in the design with power supply fluctuation this may help you see the relationship between the RF burst and that disturbance. And of course understanding the communication between your embedded system and the wireless module can always be important. So decoding this UART signal and understanding the communication going on there can also be very important. We'll do a single shot capture here to grab one acquisition and pause. And I can actually turn a bus decode on here to go take a look at what's going on on that bus. Now with the bus turned on, we can simply zoom in and take a look at what's going on with that communication on the bus at the same time when the burst is happening. So we can actually see the, the bus waveform and the bus decode here, time correlated to the RF burst. And we can scroll around and look at uh, the relationship of you know, that power supply dip, the bus, bus activity, and the RF activity all over time. Now to ensure the wireless LAN module is performing as well as it can with low distortion, we're going to do some more complete vector signal analysis using SignalView a vector signal analysis software. The MDO is connected up to the PC via a USB connection and we can simply make a live link connection from the software to the RF deck inside the MDO. And with that connection established we can now grab data and look at it here on the spectrum analyzer. We'll tell SignalView to let the scope use its own trigger settings and now we'll see that same spectrum that we were looking at earlier uh, on the MDO itself. We can start off by looking at uh, the time domain of the waveform. Let's bring up a time overview display. And this will show us essentially that same amplitude versus time display we saw on the MDO. It will increase the analysis length to encompass the entire burst. So in this case, this happens to be an 802.11b uh, wireless LAN burst. Probably the next most useful display to bring up is the constellation diagram for the wireless LAN signal. So if we bring that one up here, this will kind of show us how clean the modulation is by looking at how tight the modulation uh, constellation points are. 
Uh, so in this case we can actually see this is a very clean 802.11 QPSK modulation. Now this module is also capable of transmitting in 802.11G so let's put it in that mode and go analyze that. Our evaluation platform allows us to operate in a couple of the different uh, modulation coding schemes for 802.11G. So this is uh, BPSK for both the subcarriers and the pilots. The next scheme here shows QPSK on the data subcarriers and BPSK on the pilots. The next one will show 16 QAM on the data subcarriers and BPSK on the pilots. And then the final one will show us uh, 64 QAM for the data subcarriers and BPSK for the pilots. SignalView does a nice job of just automatically uh, determining what modulation type is being used and demodulating that properly. Another useful display to take a look at is the spectrogram. The spectrogram will give us a view of how the spectrum is changing over time. The way to think about that is it's basically taking this record of data that we've acquired and processing spectrums through that and stacking those spectrums on top of each other. In this case the vertical axis here is time, the horizontal axis is the same as the spectrum analyzer. We can examine this more closely by turning trace number one off here and if I drag a marker through the spectrogram I can actually look and see what the spectrum is doing over time throughout the entire burst. And this may be useful for looking for things like uh, spectral anomalies, some regrowth, and other RF distortion. Some of the other useful displays are error vector magnitude versus symbol and error vector magnitude versus subcarrier. And this allows us to identify any problems that there may be in modulation either on a particular subcarrier or at particular locations in time. And everything here is time correlated. So for example, if I pick a particular symbol, I can actually see where that is in on which subcarrier it's on, what symbol it's on, and where it's located in the constellation diagram. So I can pick any particular symbol to go look at here in case there was a particular issue at a particular location in time or somewhere in the spectrum where I might have some issues. Well, the wireless LAN summary table gives me a lot more information about things like burst power and uh, IQ origin offset frequency error and, and then some more statistics on the overall EVM of all the carriers or just the pilots or data uh, what the uh, average or RMS uh, values are as well as some statistics out of the training fields and signal fields within the wireless LAN burst. Other measurements that can be made are things like spectrum emission mask, the channel response, wireless LAN flatness, and also look at the magnitude and phase error components of the wireless LAN signal, and also look at the burst envelope and make uh, measurements on, uh, on pulse width and things like that. So I hope you enjoyed this brief video that showed a couple of ways that this Tektronix MDO4000 can be used to help characterize uh, the performance of a wireless LAN module that you might be embedding in your system. Well, thanks again for watching.